Hi, I'm Jody. I'm Doug. So Doug and I worked a lot on the initial design process together, and one thing that we learned was how important it is to carry a design notebook. So I had a little small design notebook that I carried pretty much everywhere I went, and in class I would just draw pictures and anything that came up to mind, and I'd go home and saw it works them afterwards. Another thing that was really crucial in, in helping us get this done on time, especially when you're when you're talking about quick deadlines and prototypes, is decoupling systems so that you don't affect one when you're trying to edit another. For example, decouple your buoyancy from your hull structure so that in case you need to make it more solid, you don't make it more buoyant. That was a really big helpful thing for us. In order to first make the motors usable, we had to cut off a lot of length of the, the shaft that's connected to the motor. And then once we cut that off, we had to waterproof the motors, which was probably one of the more difficult steps, which is how we lost one of the motors. We had to first put a cork made of polystyrene down the shaft below both the holes we drilled in it, then put, put spray foam on top of the cork and then after we let the spray foam, spray foam dry for a couple hours, we would then put a small amount of epoxy on top of that spray foam, let that dry for a night, and then we come back the next day and put the rest of the epoxy in, making sure to put the, screw, the two screws through the, the holes that we already drilled in the shaft so the epoxy didn't solidify our way through, or block our way through there. Also, we had to make sure not to both burn the wires which were coming out of the shaft with the epoxy as well as not to cut the wires when we uh, put these holes in the shaft. So that was one of the more difficult aspects of this project and uh, it's nice that we actually were able to engineer our way through that, those problems and uh, get the motors to be waterproofed. So originally we were going to make our uh, the thruster pads, which is where our thrusters were going to be mounted. We were going to make those out of aluminum plates uh, because it just seemed sort of the most obvious and easy um, uh, procedure to, to use. However, given the fact that we had limited resources um, in, in water jetting and uh, given Jody's experience in composites, we soon realized there would be a new solution. So yeah, I worked with Solar Car Team on composites and primarily with carbon fiber. But we decided that to go with fiberglass, a cheaper, a little bit less strong method, but even just as strong or even stronger than aluminum plates. Um, and, and our final thruster plates were slightly buoyant, which was great for our design. Um, then we continued to make our nose cone. Um, the nose cone is made out of foam, and it was molded with the grinder. And then we used PVC foam, also, um, also very buoyant, to mold around the nose cone and then to to create a shell for the nose cone we also made it a, car, a fiberglass composite so the process by which we made the thruster plates in the nose cone was by laying sheets of fiberglass on top of the foam mold or foam shape that we have and then vacuum forming it on top and then spending time taking it apart For the insides of our pressure vessel, aka the brains of our ROV, we have four main components, one being the Arduino, then we have three motor drivers, one for each thruster, and then we have some fuses and a battery. The Arduino is what controls, is like the brains, it controls um, all the, the speed, the PWM of the thrusters, um, and then the motor drivers are what redirect what redirect the voltage from the batteries to the um, to the thrusters. Yes. And then we also have uh, fuses in place to protect the connectors, which are part of our vessel, and uh, uh, we need to prevent uh, too much current from burning them, since they're they are very thin wires. So we have fuses in in case the motors start to to pull too much current, then they break. And, uh, Everything is protected. And lastly, we have two batteries, 14 volts, uh, uh, 10, 10 amps. And we're, uh, we have them connected in parallel into our Arduino air motor drivers. We also, to connect the, the insides of our brain to the outside world, aka the switches, 
um, that controls speed, uh, your our pitch, and the, our on our on off switch. We have these waterproof connectors um, on our pressure vessel, and those basically redirect all our signals and our power to the outside switches and motors. Thank you.